In this video, I'm going to be going through the root tip squash required practical for A-level biology. We're going to be looking at the equipment, the method, and then tips and tricks to try and help make sure that it works. Because if you've ever done this before, you'll know notoriously it's so difficult for students to be able to find any cells that are currently undergoing mitosis. If you want to download for free this practical guide that has everything that I'm going to go through in this video, then I'll link it in the description below. And make sure you are subscribed because I'm going through every single required practical. Practical. Plus a special shout out and thank you to Woodford County High School for having me in to film these practicals. The whole aim of this practical is we want students to be able to identify cells under the microscope that are currently undergoing mitosis so they can see and hopefully identify the different stages of mitosis to so what they learn in terms of the behavior of chromosomes during the different phases of mitosis they can actually see on the microscope. Plus it links to that math skill, the mitotic index, where they need to be able to identify identify how many cells there are in the field of view and how many cells are currently undergoing mitosis and then they can work that out as a proportion. But before we jump into all of that, let's have a look at our equipment. So you are going to need, I'm using garlic today, garlic that's been left to grow, submerged in water so you do have roots. We need acid and the role of this acid, which is actually a really common exam question now, is that is going to stop mitosis happening any further so we get a snapshot. It it also helps to break down the connections and the links between the cell walls so that when we squash it, we do get a single layer of cells. And it can also help with the stain being absorbed into the cell and the chromosomes getting stained. That takes us on to the stain and I'm actually using toluidine blue for this and this will stain the chromosomes so that they become visible when we look under the microscope. We have our cover slides and our cover slips. I've got a stop clock here because some of the stages we need to leave to happen for about 10 to 15 minutes, but they don't have to have accurate timings for that. I've got a mounted needle and I've got some sharp scissors, but they could also use a scalpel cutting onto a white tile. And for the heating stages, I'm actually going to opt to use this heating mantle, this heating plate, because it's far safer in terms of not having hot water that could scold and spill and not using a naked flame. But you may not have this, so you could opt for using a water bath instead. So the key things that you need to be aware of in terms of the risk assessment are we are using one molar hydrochloric acid. So you have to have eye protection on at all times. And throughout, I'm actually going to be using gloves at any point when I'm using the acid as well. The stain can be an Plus it can just stain your skin and clothes, but that's not so much the risk. But we are wearing goggles because it could be an irritant for the eyes. We then also have our slides and our cover slips, which are glass. They could break and cause cuts. In particular, the very, very fine cover slips. So do make students aware that they are very, very thin. And if they push down too hard at one point, rather than an even pressure across a larger surface area, it could snap and shatter the cover slip. But I'll show that when we get to that point as well. We've got the sharp mounted needle, sharp scissors, and also the scalpel would be sharp. So students need to handle those with care and any cutting needs to be on a hard surface away from them. And then lastly, depending on what you're using as your heat source to heat up the acid, students need to be careful that they're not going to be burning themselves. If you're using a heating mantle, pointing out that they shouldn't touch the top. If it's hot water, making sure that they are handling the kettle, if that's what you're using, with care as well. So in terms of the variables for this investigation, it's not really one where it's a quantitative experiment that we're getting a quantitative result of an endpoint of reaction. We're more interested in seeing the actual stages of mitosis. However, there are things that we could control if we were going to compare maybe two different plants, for example. So we need to make sure that we are going to be using the same age garlic each time. Ideally, it'd be from the same garlic, same age. We'd need to leave it in the acid for the same amount of time. We'd need to use the same volume and concentration of our indicator as well. So the first step I've actually already done and got set up because I was doing this earlier, but just to go through what you'd need to do. I've got the garlic and use my sharp scissors. I cut off just the very, very tip of that root. So it was about three millimeters from the end and I took three root tips and I placed them onto this watch glass here with a few drops of acid and it's been heating on this heating mantle at about 50 degrees for over 15 minutes. I also used 
used the mounted needle to help macerate it. And all of this is to help break down the cells that are connected. So when we come to squash it, we do get a single layer of cells so that light can pass through and we'll be able to visualize the results. That's it also there to stop mitosis as we talked about earlier on in the video. So the next step then is I'm gonna add some stain to this while it is heating as well. I'm going to leave that on the heating mantle with the root tips for about two minutes. And this is to give a chance for that stain to get into the cells, get to the chromosomes and stain them. So while I'm waiting, I've got my slide and I'll get my cover slip as well. I'm just going to remove some of the excess stain take these gloves off, rinse it with some water just so I can see. Right, I'm going to try and deliberately now just suck up my root tips and place them onto my slide. So there's some of it there. Just going to get some of that excess liquid. And there's some more root tip. And then I can, I'm going to move, this is like my main root tip that I'm going to aim to see. So using my mountain needle, just position that there. Place the cover slip on top. And now this is where we get the squash part. So I'm gonna put a piece of tissue paper on top and we need to squash so that we do get that single layer of cells, but we need to make sure we're not just pushing down in one place because that could shatter the glass. So I'm gonna place this on top. So it's also gonna absorb any liquid either side and just smooth my hand, not sliding it because we don't wanna slide it. I'm keeping it in one position, but just going back and forth. So it's going to gently squash it. And now we can see that we have got our root tip squash slide created. So now we've made our slide, we're going to mount it onto the optical microscope and see, can we actually find any cells undergoing mitosis? I would get the students to clear away everything that could be harmful. So clear away the stain, the acid, and all of that at this stage. So we now just have our slides. They can take off their goggles looking at the microscope. So I'm gonna take my microscope slide and get the students to place it on the stage and it's then clipped into position. Always start with the lowest power magnification first, because it's easiest then to find all of the cells and then they can work their way up. And depending on what type of microscope you have, it may be the same level of sophistication, this or not. I've actually got a dial here that I can turn to move my specimen so I can see it's directly under the light. So I know it's going to be in the correct position. So I'm moving it so I can see that is now in the right position and have a look through and I just need to focus that a bit and then I'll show you what I'm currently looking at. So that's what I can currently see. And I would get students to take video through the lens or photos through the lens so that they can easily describe or point out to you what they can see. But at this stage, the cells, we don't have anywhere near a high enough magnification to actually see the chromosomes within the cells. So now I've actually got it in the correct position, I can move up a magnification. So for context, that was my four times magnification lens. And now I'm going up to my 10 times. So I can still see, but I'm just gonna slightly change the position so I can see a section where I think, hopefully we'll get some good cells to see. So again, I'll just show you what I was looking at. Uh, I'm gonna move up to a high magnification this time, times 40. Do let the students know that they need to be careful that each of these lenses is longer. So they need to make sure they don't accidentally move the lens down and crush your slide. So that's why I was actually just checking from the side, making sure there was space 
So then I'm gonna have another look. And I was using these dials here, which are like our coarse and fine focus to get the image into focus. If students are struggling to get it to focus, generally speaking, it pops into focus when the lens is very, very close to the slide. So if there's a big gap between the lens and the slide, then it's probably not gonna focus. It needs to be really close to it. But as I said, check that. They don't then move it all the way down and it crushes and smashes the slide. So this is now in focus and I can see cells. I'm just going to move it around okay i think i can actually see some already might be in stages of mitosis i'm just going to adjust the focus and then take a photo so you can see what i'm seeing now at this point it's worth noting and this is what's happening to me and just to tell the students because you're now at such a high magnification even the slightest change to your focus dials can very quickly make it go out of focus so you want to be using the fine focus not the coarse one at this stage i've actually got one here that goes up to a hundred times so let's just move that in place i've actually lost the position of it now hmm let's get you back oh it's over there okay so go this way and then if i go backwards it should be bang under now yeah there we go i suppose i should say that's a tip rather than just saying out loud so what i was just doing then was because i took the slide out to put the oil on when i put it back it must be in a slightly different position and when you're on that high magnification it can make it really difficult to find the cells that you were looking at so what i then did was just moved it all the way out to make sure i definitely had it aligned in the correct position in this way so it's called that vertically so when i moved it backwards I could see when it went exactly underneath the lens and it would be in the correct position. And now I have managed to find it without having to go all the way back up to the lower magnifications. So now it's just focusing. So the hardest bit now is, so I've got it in focus and I can see all the cells, but this is when students now need to have quite a bit of patience and just move along their slide and try and find a field of view that has any cells undergoing mitosis. So that's what I'm currently doing. There's some that look like they might be in telophase, which I'll show you, but I'm just gonna keep looking to see if I can find, so if there's a metaphase or an anaphase, that's a lot more obvious visually. You can see one section here where I've not squashed it enough because I've got several layers of cells. So I needed to squash that a bit more. Now, one of my top tips is always have a pre-made slide or image that you can show the students so they know what they should be looking for and hopefully they've got enough time to be able to look and find something. So I'm actually going to show you here one of the photos that's actually come from one of my colleagues who got this image when she was doing this practical. So here you can see clearly the cells and the different stages of mitosis. And this is the sort of thing that hopefully the students are able to find. Now, it's always good to have a backup in case yours doesn't work. So I'm actually using here a slide that my teacher friend Mrs Egan managed to get really good results for when she taught this recently to demonstrate how your students could then collect their results. So either they'll get an image like this themselves or if not I'd recommend you provide them with an image that they can then calculate the mitotic index on. And the mitotic index is when you're doing the number of stages visible that are in mitosis divided by the total number of cells visible. And I'd recommend to the students that they have a look, take a photo, print it off and then work it out. Because if we go through this one, it's going to be really hard to count all the cells without losing track unless you can cross them off. So the first thing that I would do then is work out which cells are in mitosis. And what you need to tell your students for this is any cell that there are visible chromosomes in is in mitosis. So all of these where you can't see the individual chromosomes, it looks a bit like a blurry, shady part, that would be interphase. Whereas this here is a cell in mitosis in anaphase because we can see the chromatids have been pulled to opposite poles. This one here is in metaphase. We can see those chromosomes lining up at the equator. And we've got another one up here in anaphase. As for all of the rest, I can't see any others where there are visible chromosomes. There is one here, but because the cell is half included, half not, you wouldn't include it in your count. And I would give that as a general rule to the students, unless it is an entire cell in view, do not include it. That is where I've gone through and counted all of the complete cells. So these I didn't include as completed cells because you can't see the whole thing. And I had 47. And then I've got one, two, three cells that are in mitosis. We've got anaphase, metaphase, anaphase. 
So to calculate the mitotic index then, we would need to do 3 divided by 47. 3 because we've got 3 cells in mitosis, 47 because that's how many cells I could see, and that comes to 0 0.06 that would be the mitotic index. And then you could encourage students to pull their class data if they have done this using the same garlic or the same species of garlic and work out an average. Or even better, if there's time and they've got good results, they can then look at another field of view from their own microscope slide and calculate an average. So that is it for the mitosis, a root tip squash required practical. Remember, if you do want to have this entire method, practical top tips and the guide for free, it's linked in the description. And make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss out on the next practical video.